Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am starting live a couple minutes early this time. I want to give time, people time to come and gather. Um, so here I am early, but I'm not going to say much. Uh, so we will get started with this. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm really excited to be talking about this today. Oh, I will put this link in the live chat um, right now. It's www.ewg.org. Um, it is a environmental working group is what it stands for. Uh, it's an amazing website. Again, I wish my computer was new enough <laughs> to screen share. Um, and But you guys can go look it up, hang out for a minute or so while we're waiting um, for our actual class time at 7 o'clock to start. So Environmental Working Group has amazing resources about chemicals and news. I was just scrolling through some of their uh, important events or something. I can't remember what they called it. Um, and they were just talking about some of the victories that parents and, and um, people have had over corporations and companies that are using chemicals on our food that actually hurt us um, but help them. And so they're able to use it. So. Anyway, it, that will come in relevance here um, in a second as we get into the class, which starts now. So, 7 o'clock, welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us. In case you're not familiar with YouTube Live, just a quick tour. Um, glad that you're here. You can log into live chat and ask questions during this time. Uh, you, it just requires a Google login. Um, and those questions will appear then on my screen and I can answer them if there are any that come up. Um, my purpose today in uh, this class and the topics we're going to cover are going to be um, growing healthy children in this world. I chose growing instead of raising uh, because growing you really do have an awesome responsibility and also opportunity to help your child be healthy and strong. And while that happened somewhat more naturally um, in previous generations, it is still possible to happen now. We just need to be aware of the current situation of our world um, in terms of food and toxicity. Um, and then we need to know how to counteract that and help that out. So um, uh, I can't, I wanted to write down, I said something I forgot to write on my little outlines. So I wanted to make sure I wrote that down. So I didn't forget to talk about it. All right. Um, we are, uh-oh, it is not allowing me to connect to chat at the moment, but hopefully you guys are still seeing me and this is still working. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and jump into, I kind of have two categories of things that we're talking about. One, why is it difficult to grow healthy children and what we can do about it? Because again, I, I don't, I will talk about topics that don't have hope, but thankfully all topics have hope. There's always a response that we can give in the midst of whatever situation we find ourselves that does allow us to respond, um, be have a responsibility. I love Stephen Covey's um, discussion of responsibility. Uh, we always have a, a ability to respond or responsibility in any situation that will bring good, that we can bring good to. So I am excited to talk about <laughs> talk about that. Okay, so first off, I wanted to tell you as parents, you are doing a great job. There are a lot of disadvantages you have um, and that you've been put in because of the state of the world. So what are some of those disadvantages? Let's talk through them really quick. And then we're going to talk about how you, as a great parent, can do different things that make sense once you figure out what the state of the world is. A lot of these things are not things that we talk about. Anyone is talking about. Um, so how do you know what to do different? So we're going to talk about that. Uh, number one, food, chemicals, uh, soil, stress level. These are all things that are incredibly increased in our world. Um, I have 
Someone said, and it's true, that before World War I, especially, um, and definitely World War II, so that time period, is when the first chemicals really appeared in our world. We did not have hardly any man-made chemicals at that point, and none of them were put on our food. Our food sourcing um, changed significantly with Industrial Revolution and later with the World Wars. So this is an incredible shift in how we raise food. Before that, we raised a lot of food on farms. And even if you yourself did not have a farm, because lots of people did live in towns and cities and maybe just had a chicken or two, um, if anything, but there was someone nearby that had a farm. So everything was very locally sourced, grown on a farm where the cows ate the grass and pooped and the chickens scratched the poop and then they planted different crops there and we had this nourishing um, rebuilding of soil nutrition because of the practices of the small farming. That's not how we farm anymore, hardly at all. It is so different to get your food from a farm and very, very few people farm themselves. Um, even farmers who do agricultural farming don't necessarily eat their own food or farm a, a full farm. Um, it's also very difficult to even find farm. I've been piecing together just for myself all the different aspects and getting them locally, not just to get them locally, but to get them where I know the farmer and I know what I'm getting. So this is incredibly difficult because there's the, the market has shifted so much that most of our food is found in stores from mono crop farms or mono agriculture um, that raises a certain type of food for us and they ship that type of food to stores and we buy them from the different brands. Right. So um, there's a couple problems with this. Uh, number one, that food is not as nutrient dense as it used to be, because when we are adding chemicals instead of manure to soil, we are depleting our soil. When we add pesticides and herbicides, even many organic ones, these kill the microbiome of the soil, which hinders the plant's ability to digest, to absorb nutrition through the roots, just like it hinders our ability to absorb nutrition when our microbiome is off. So it's a, it's a very challenging situation um, that our food is coming from depleted soils where the plants can't get enough nutrition. Even the chemicals aside, even organic food is nutritionally less dense than it used to be. Okay, you all know I could talk about that forever, but let's not. So we have depleted soil. This means mineral depletion and vitamin depletion. That means if you eat a carrot, the FDA measurement of carrots that they did one time on one carrot or whatever they did um, is probably not anywhere close to the amount of nutrition you are now eating in a carrot when you eat a carrot. So um, every time that you eat food, you are getting more calories and fiber and probably in most cases, less nutrition, vitamins, minerals, cofactors. This is really showing up generationally. So we're talking about kids here, but I have to start in this place because the number of years and the generations passing um, from the 40s and 50s, uh, that is increasing not only the depletion of the soil, but the depletion of our bodies. So as women and men, as we are bearing children, um, our body takes the nutrition, especially for women, from our bodies to make a tiny human. Uh, when you make a tiny human and you don't have enough nutrition to give, your baby is not going to have enough nutrition either. Um, especially if you are not eating really dense, um, what a lot of cultures called, hmm, what Dr. Royal Lee, sorry, Weston A. Price deemed from studying ancient cultures as sacred foods. Sacred foods are incredibly nutrient-dense food that the, the people knew this is how we have healthy children and mothers um, and babies. And if we don't get these foods, we don't have healthy pregnancies, births, and mothers and babies. So uh, we're going to talk about some of those in the second half, but uh, especially if you're not eating those types of foods and we're eating just our depleted soil, again, how do you know this, right? It's not your fault. You don't know, um, but I'm letting you know now. Our soils are depleted. We don't have the nutrition in it, even, even if you eat good stuff. Okay, number two is chemicals. Chemicals um, are huge in our foods, not only chemicals and pesticides and herbicides, but also actual food additive chemicals. 
I was misquoting a number. I was saying it too high. Sorry for people who have heard me say it, but here's the correct number I was seeing. Anywhere from 12,000 to 14,000 chemicals are approved for use in food. 14,000 individual synthetically made, man-made chemicals that have never been tested in any kind of combination in the human body and no long-term testing has ever been done on. Except for, you know, basic safety is isolated in things. So it's a really big deal that we have so many chemicals. And these are new chemicals that our body has to notice and break down. Sorry, not breathing. <laughs> notice and break down and um, get rid of or store because it's causing damage and har harm to the body. So 14,000 or more chemicals. These are approved food chemicals they put on purpose into food. That's not to mention however many, and I did not look up the number, pesticides and herbicides, both organic and commercial, um, that are put on our food and are still present in our food. There is a list called the Dirty Dozen and another list called the Clean 15. These lists actually may be housed on the EWG.org, um, but these lists are, you can look it up by Dirty Dozen, Clean 15. But these lists um, tell the, the dirty dozen is the 12 foods that contain the most pesticides when you test them, and it's most important to eat organic. And then the clean 15 are foods that contain little to no pesticides, even if they are a conventional raised non-organic type of food. So these are very helpful to know, and if budget is um, an issue, you can modify a little bit in those different areas. Some key ones that I know, avocados are on the clean 15. I think onions are as well. Citrus maybe too, kind of things with a hard protective shell. Um, again, this is just lower amounts of chemicals. Um, and then on the upside, we have things like um, berries, grapes. Um, there are dozens to scores of chemicals found in individual grapes or berries um, when they test them. So these are grown with significant chemicals most of the time. Okay, um, chemicals, why, why do we care about chemicals? Well, pesticides and herbicides we care about because the point of them is to kill things. Many of them are neurotoxins. And the theory is, but humans are bigger than bugs and so it doesn't matter. The problem with that is, is humans eat a lot of food over their lifetime. And if you don't have a good detoxification system, we are going to have some problems with chemical buildup in our bodies. So eventually we will also get neurotoxic symptoms. Um, some of the other things that are so problematic in the greater um, environment, uh, ecology, is that the word, of the world is when we have bugs that are filled with toxins, and then we have birds that eat the bugs filled with toxins. The birds eventually get sick and die. And this happens a lot. Um, very common. You can look up. It's very sad. You can look up pictures of farmers that just had sprayed DDT or something else that maybe killed their spiders. And then all their sparrows died. Well, what happens when the sparrows died? That we're disrupting the food chain. Um, all the way from the bottom, all the way up. So we can actually get some pretty significant ripple effects in the whole ecology of the environment because of using pesticides. That is, again, completely aside from killing the gut flora, sorry, killing the soil flora. I say gut flora way too many times a day <laughs> to not always say gut flora together. Um, that's killing the soil um, flora, which, again, hinders the plant from absorbing food well. So going to be um, even further, not just depleted soil, but either even further depleted because the plants can absorb what is even available to them. All right. Even though it's a vitamin deficiency, technically I put separately B vitamin deficiency because I see this in almost every patient that I see now. Um, it is a huge, it's a widespread issue. And here is why, because I feel like a lot of people can be discouraged about it um, until I explain these things. So number one, how do we get B vitamins? We get B vitamins. Top three sources are liver, nutritional yeast, beets. 
Most people do not eat any of those. So some people eat nutritional yeast. Some people love beets. Occasionally, I'll meet someone that likes liver. Um, but no one eats it regularly, like <laughs> every week, like your grandparents used to do. Um, we don't we don't eat it regularly. Um, when we don't eat B vitamins regularly, we will very soon and quickly, oh, excuse me, be depleted. What happens when you get depleted or what depletes your B vitamins? B vitamins are depleted by caffeine, processed carbohydrates, processed sugar, um, well, any kind of sugar. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, any carbs, any sugar, um, caffeine, so chocolate, coffee, teas even. Um, they get depleted by stress. We use them up quickly when we are stressed. They get depleted by tox certain toxins, especially toxins from molds. So if you have some people, I will find mold toxicity in them because I found the B vitamin deficiency in them. Um, and then parasites can often use up B vitamins, um, mostly because parasites will give off a lot of toxins. So if there's nothing kind of going on in the environment uh, of a person, often we will look at parasites as the one who's eaten all the B vitamins that the body gets. We also have trouble with absorbing, especially synthetic B vitamins when you have MTHFR mutation, which uh, is known to be pretty common. Um, I've heard some people say that probably a third of the population have it. I have, uh, I, it's fun to know extra things, but one of the big things with <clears throat> MTHFR mutation is, number one, it means you probably have toxins because your body's not doing as efficient of a job unless you specifically support it well um, as the person who does not have a mutation. Um, and number two, it means that unless you are taking a real food B vitamin supplement, like <laughs> eating liver or doing desiccated liver, um, you probably are not absorbing any kind of synthetic B or multivitamin B vitamin that you are getting. So it's very important um, to just be eating vitamins from food because, oh, so sorry. <laughs> because then I'm not breathing well enough, um, because then when we get vitamins from foods, the vitamins in foods are a complete complex and they come with cofactors and those cofactors help us to absorb our food well. All right, B vitamins. Um, what happens when you have B vitamin deficiency? Let's just finish on that train. B vitamin deficiency in small Man manageable. The body's not really uh, in trouble yet. We are going to see vertical ridges in the nail going this way, the same direction as the length of your finger. We're going to often see pale nail beds, not pale when you have circulation pressing, but actually just inherently pale. Um, we can have a lot of fatigue. We can have muscle cramps. We can have uh, difficulty staying asleep. Uh, we can also have sometimes restless leg, again, because B vitamins get used up with toxins. And when you're trying to get rid of toxins, we have to use B vitamins to metabolize them out. So that's why they get used up quickly. Um, we also can see um, heart symptoms. Wow. I'm not yawned all day. I guess it's getting late. Um, we can also see heart symptoms. Heart symptoms are going to be things like flutters. Um, palpitations, skipped beats, or you just notice your heart. Your heart beats all the time with rest periods, right? It beats all the time, and you should never notice that it's doing what it's doing. So anytime you have a heartbeat and you're feeling your heartbeat, your heart is saying, ah, attention, I need something. Um, maybe you just were running way too fast, and you just, it wants you to slow down and catch up, and that's fine. Um, but when you're at rest or when you're just going about your day, I used to get heart palpitations driving a lot because, again, stress will suck the rest of those B vitamins out. And then all of a sudden you start skipping beats, which is not a good thing to do on the highway. Um, so those are all different um, B vitamin deficiency symptoms. I'm getting pretty good because I have a heart sound recorder. So I see a lot of people's hearts and I always listen to what their heart sounds like and then see what it looks like on the graph. So I'm getting pretty good at being able to hear what I imagine the graph will look like and running the graph and finding that. Um, it's pretty cool because I can then just listen with the stethoscope and have some recommendations for your heart and your body's health 
um, just from what I hear in the stethoscope. What I hear a lot is quiet hearts. Um, even ones I have to lean, I have to have the person lean forward for the heart to come forward in the chest for me to even be able to hear it. Um, that's that's a really tired heart. And that heart needs some nutrition, mostly B vitamins. Um, I also hear a lot in adults and in children, back to children, um, some murmurs. A murmur is not something to be dreadfully afraid of because um, we know why there's a murmur. A murmur is when I hear extra or extended or whooshing sounds in the heart. So if I hear a murmur in your child's heart, it is like, well, you can see my door frame. It's like having a door frame. The door frame is the heart muscle wall. And then there's a door, which is the valve of the heart. And those valves open and close to allow the blood to flow through. If your murmur is happening, it means blood is leaking around the outside of the door. But don't freak out because it doesn't mean that the valve has a problem. Most of the time, that's not true. Almost never is the valve the problem. Almost always the heart muscle is the problem. And what's happened is that door frame has morphed because the heart's compensating. It's beating inefficiently or one side is beating slightly faster than the other or all these different modifications. So your door frame's bent. Of course your door doesn't fit or it takes a second to kind of get itself closed, right? We've all had those doors that jimmy up. Um, so that is what we're looking at when I hear murmur in your heart or your child's heart. Um, it is not a big deal, except it is, right? Strength in the heart, but it's nothing scary. It's fixable. We just need some B vitamins. So anyway, that's what we will often see. Um, also, sometimes the liver needs a lot of B vitamins. So oftentimes we'll get a swollen tongue um, or a line down the middle of the tongue uh, when we have B vitamin deficiency as well. Corners of the mouth being cracked and cuticle pulls, you know, and you get those ouchy cuticles. Those are also B vitamin deficiency symptoms as well as a, uh, a like restlessness, but still fatigue. So you're tired, but also you can't stop moving um, or things like indecisiveness actually. Um, your heart, when it's not getting B vitamins, is, is split in its sound. And that split heart actually gets a little bit, um, it carries over into the, the emotions and the, the mental emotional action of our body, um, meaning we have split decisions. So we may bump into things a little bit more. Um, we may not be able to make decisions about where to go to eat or things like that. Um, it's a very exhausting. So B vitamin deficiency and heart stress is definitely exhausting. All right, just make sure I don't think of anything else of why it's difficult. So we have food depletion, nutrition depletion. Oh, there's one more. Thank you. I knew there was one more and I had forgotten to write it down, but I've remembered it. We aren't taught correctly about food. Starting from the very beginning, we are told that babies need to eat rice cereal to keep them from, to help them sleep through the night. Rice cereal truly just fills, expands in the stomach and fills the stomach, keeps the bad microbiome, well, all the gut flora, but also bad stuff, happy by eating and chomping on undigested, un babies can't really digest grains. So if you do rice formula, which is a grain, um, you are just basically providing food for the gut flora. The gut flora may be happy in that case, but often constipation or spitting up um, or yeah, reflux, um, painful or not, colic and cradle cap, dandruff, eczema, those types of things flare when we get a lot of carbohydrates. So we're taught that from the beginning, people are teaching parents to do the wrong things, which is really, really sad to my heart because um, so many parents are all parents are doing the best that they can and really trying to do the right things. So it's so sad when misinformation is out there. Then we move to baby food. Number one, baby food is a marketing scheme. You don't have to have baby food. They didn't have baby food. Um, actually, most cultures pre-chewed, the mother pre-chewed the food and gave it to the baby, right? Which sounds gross until you're mom and you're like, oh yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> um, that is actually excellent because you are introducing your own enzymes and microbiome into that baby's system. It's another way to introduce more um, good and information and adult 
immune education into the system of your child. So that's a great way to do it. Um, you don't have to chew every bite of your child's food. Food You can also just give them food and allow them to eat good probiotics. So the first foods that I have people start out with, and these are Weston A. Price recommendations, is liver, um, animal fats, avocado is fine, um, sauerkraut pieces we start very quickly, um, any kind of vegetables that are cooked are fine. I have parents cut off the fatty part of the steak and just have the child, I mean, they just grab it and eat it. I had a mom, um, a parent's in today, and the dad said, actually, um, that he can't take, he can't get it away from his child. Once they give him that, he eats it. You, you can't get it away from him. So they absolutely love it. It's so good. And as long as pieces are too small or too big to choke on, you are good. And obviously you monitor your child while they're eating. You don't leave them alone to eat. So giving them real foods, foods that are available year round. Um, Cause historically fresh fruits and vegetables, um, fresh, uh, really, especially fresh fruit is, was not available very long in the year. So fermented and preserved foods and meats and animal fats are what are necessary to grow healthy children. All right, get back on track of, I hate staying in the negatives. So I keep popping into the, here's how you fix it, um, which is fine. So we have baby foods, we have kid foods, right? Mac and cheese is a kid food. Chicken nuggets is a kid food. The honest truth parent is that your child eats those foods and will, if they are very, very picky, they are eating only those foods because their microbiome is already broken. It's uh, not irrevocably broken, but it already is imbalanced. It needs support and help. And if you can support and help your child's microbiome, you are going to see a child who eats and loves the nourishing, delicious, real foods that you want to give them and that I'm telling you that are good for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, if you want to talk about liver or baby's first foods, I do have a YouTube live that I did where I actually cooked the foods in my kitchen. Um, so you can go watch that and look that up. And I will try to remember to link it below. <laughs> okay, so we have problems. B vitamins and other nutrition is depleted from the soil. We also have dead soil, which means we have dead food. Um, a lot of times we can't absorb as much nutrition the plants can't absorb as much nutrition in, which means we have less to eat when we eat it. We have passed on nutritional deficiencies, generationally worsening to our children. So we are four or five generations now away from World War II, I think. Sometimes three, right? Three to five, depending on where people are at, but three to five away from World War I, for sure. Um, that is showing up. Um, the kids that I see now for well child checks, the new birds I see are very different constitutionally, much less in general average than kids I saw seven years ago. Um, it's pretty crazy to see the change in that nutritional deficiency um, catching up. We have a ton of chemicals and our body has to deal with those. And pesticides. <sighs> And then we don't have refrigeration anymore, which means that we eat less fermented foods by default, whereas we used to add fermented foods every day because otherwise food would not preserve, would not last. We also didn't have refrigeration for meat, so we were eating moldy cheese and mold on our meat, even if it was not observable. Um, you ate meat for three days. It just sat in your cupboard, and you tried to keep the sun and the flies off of it. So it's a very different experience that we have now um, eating food and getting exposure to microbiome. All right, how to counteract. I went through most of these already, but I will go ahead and um, go through them again in brief. Number one, I want to stop here and say, so when I started learning about natural health and realizing the amount of chemicals and the, the dismal status of food nutrition, I got very overwhelmed. How in the world are you going to do anything, especially on front of chemicals, because we don't really have any control. Yes, you can stop eating processed food. All those 1,400 um, different chemicals are put into foods that are highly processed or from less reputable companies, um, like when your chicken is injected with et cetera, et cetera, to make it appear more appealing in the package. 
Okay. So if you avoid processed foods and chem uh, processed foods and injected foods, you are going to avoid probably 1400 chemicals that you could potentially be exposed to. So number one, you can cut out processed foods and make everything from scratch. It's a huge giant step in helping out um, with your child's health. Number two, um, we also have chemicals in the soil that is food is grown in. Organic chemicals are better than commercial chemicals, but both are chemicals. So the best thing is grow your own garden that's chemical free or join a CSA or find a local farmer, etc., etc. One that cares about and knows that the soil microbiome has to be alive to get good nourishing dense foods. Um, if you are local, I have some resources, so you can reach out to me. Um, also, the Weston A. Price Foundation, um, which I always forget the call for it, so I'm not going to say it on this video, but I will put it in the chat. Write that down. W-A-P-F, Weston A. Price Foundation, but that's not what the website is. Um, what was the other thing that I said? I'll put the E-W-G on here under the chat, and a oh, link to baby food. Okay. So we have those different things. Those different things are helping out. Sorry, Weston A. Price Foundation helps connect you to real food, raw milk, um, local farmers, or farmers that ship if your area is devoid of local farmers that grow food well, because some places are. All right, so real food. Oh, where we are. Oh, so I was hopeless. I was overwhelmed. I was so sad and I was having thoughts like I guess I have to move to Canada like I don't how do I get away from these chemicals I was learning that my body was responding very strongly to many chemicals and I couldn't I didn't know what to do I didn't know where to focus my attention do you worry about EMFs do you worry about pesticides do you worry about herbicides do you worry about um, gluten do you worry about dairy you know what do you do and then I found gaps um, the gut and psychology syndrome, and I, one of the many reasons that I do what I do. Because Dr. Natasha explains in it how our bodies are made to deal with the environment. Dr. Um, Weston A. Price talked about this as well. He found places where they lived in huts where there was no uh, chimney, and they had a fire inside the house. Because they actually found, interestingly, that the smoke going up through the peat moss roof would actually, that put on their field would nourish their crops and they would grow four or five times better than if they did not have smoke peat moss to put on their, their uh, fields. So huge difference in nutritional content, um, which we won't get into. There are reasons. It's pretty cool, but we won't. These people lived in houses with smoke filling their house with no chimney and they didn't have lung disease. They didn't have allergies. They didn't have tuberculosis, which was one of the things he went and studied when they ate a traditional diet. But when modern foods of commerce is what he calls them, processed grains and processed flours and processed sugar, when those came to the town and people started eating them, all of a sudden those people started getting tuberculosis. So the health experts told them to move out of their houses um, or stop or put chimneys in so that they didn't get smoke inhalation. And this is where they discovered that the smoke actually made their crops grow. So some people had houses to live in and houses that they burned fires in. So they got the peat moss with the smoke to put on their crops. Anyway, it made it more complicated. Do you know what they could have done? They could have gone back to eating traditional foods because they were not getting diseases when they were eating traditional foods. That story gave me hope. And Dr. Natasha, that was from Weston A. Price. And then Dr. Natasha expounded on it a lot more of how to heal the body. The body wants to be strong and it can take care of a lot. It can't take care of 1,400 chemicals and processed food and crap that you're putting in your body. You have to stop doing that. But when you stop doing that and start eating real food, your body is able to repair, restore, clean up, strengthen, and handle the world. And you can do that for your children's bodies. You can help your children's bodies strengthen and handle the world. So, hooray. All right. So there's three major categories that you want to think about. You want to think about toxins and chemicals. 
Um, these are avoiding them, which we've already talked a lot about, and getting them out. And these are gentle detox methods like, and there's videos on this and blog posts on this. Go look at my stuff. Um, but de uh, gentle detox methods are detox bath with apple cider vinegar, baking soda. By the way, removing the chloride and chlorine because that's another toxin. Um, things like oil pulling for older children. Even three-year-olds often can do it um, and up. Uh, we can do sunbathing bathing and swimming in natural waters like lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans. Uh, we can do um, eating juice, juicing. Um, fresh pressed juices can be very detoxifying, as is eating nourishing foods and eating enough minerals in the form of good salts like Baja gold salt or um, Celtic sea salt are very high in minerals. Okay, so number one, toxins out, no toxins in as much as possible. Number two, a lot of those toxins are your microbiome. Um, a lot of, up to 90% of the toxins in our body, it's estimated are actually microbiome toxins, meaning our bad gut flora is producing toxins in our body. So what do we need to do? We need to switch over our microbiome using probiotics and fermented foods. Lots of them, lots of variety. There's gonna be something you like. There's gonna be something that works for your body and causes a difference. We have to talk about die off just for a second. Die off is when the good bacteria comes in and wants to be in the same place as the bacteria, bad bacteria lives, they have a fight and the bad bacteria that was releasing a little bit of toxin all the time explodes and releases all of its toxin at once causing a temporary increase of symptoms. Die off will make your symptoms worse or your child's eczema or sleeplessness or bedwetting it will make those worse. Bedwetting is another symptom of toxins. Temporarily, if that happens, it is good news. We found something that is vying for the same camping spot as the bacteria that's causing things and problems. So we want it, but go slow, take breaks when you need to, don't overwhelm their body. The other thing microbiome does for us is Microbiome's job in itself is also to bind and denature toxins, to render them inert. So if you have a strong microbiome, you actually will detoxify faster or prevent toxins from the environment from getting into the body versus just into the intestinal tract. So that's good. All right, so microbiome does two things. Actually, a fun story. Um, one of my patients, their boy was allergic to gluten. Many of us react to, especially American gluten. He got into something on the counter, you know, and got that flour, put some in his mouth, was starting to have uh, a pretty significant red eczema high V reaction. She sat him down, wiped him off, sat him down, gave him a plate full of sauerkraut. He ate the sauerkraut and all of his symptoms went away because those toxins were bound up by the the good bacteria that it was eaten and it, it helped the body out. If your child is struggling with eating fermented foods, um, try oil pulling if they're old enough. Um, just per pursue and persevere giving in as much as you can. There's often a die-off reaction that happens in the mouth and those probiotics actually taste like acetone or alcohol to them. Um, so try to, to persevere through that. Um, or find ways in small enough amounts that you can keep going. Um, and as always, you can reach out to me for ideas for your specific case um, if you can't figure it out. So, all right. Microbiome, super important. Um, it also communicates with our metabolic system and our immune system of what is helpful, what is good, what we should be doing, what we need to get rid of. Um, so, huge amounts of information and helpfulness when we have our good gut flora. Last thing is foods. Foods do two things. They feed our gut flora and they feed us. Food is nutrition packaged in a functional complex. A lot of times the, the nutrition quote we are told to eat, the multivitamins and mineral supplements are actually synthetically made or synthetically broken apart and isolated. So they are no longer functional sections of, of uh, information. Food is information, not just building blocks, but additionally, food is information. So if we can't, if we only get building blocks and not information 
we can't rebuild our bodies very efficiently. Even if that vitamin or supplement you're taking is from a food source, um, but it's been broken down and manipulated to the extent it's no longer correct information, you'll get some benefit, maybe, hopefully, but you are not going to get the same as if you were eating the whole package, the package deal. So we don't want to break apart um, complexes. We want to keep them together um, in the forms of which we don't understand fully how complex food works, how our body understands and gets nutrition. So the best, the best course of action is don't mess with it. Don't think that we can play God. Don't think that we can chemically um, manipulate and balance our bodies in the complex way that we probably only understand a, a fraction, a hundredth, one one hundredth of how our bodies work, if even that. We have no idea how so many functions in our body work. So what we do know are good foods that have been eaten by healthy humans through all of history. Let's eat that. We don't have to be so smart. We can just eat those foods. It's very great. All right. So important dense foods for your child to eat. When we are growing skeletal systems and teeth and healthy eyes and healthy brains, we need a lot of animal fat and a lot of vitamins A and D and K and let's see what I'm missing. A, D, K, there's something else. We need B vitamins. Um, those are found in uh, muscle tissue mostly, like I said, beets, liver, and nutritional yeast. Um, and any fermented foods, by the way, our gut microbiome or any microbiome, any bacteria make, many bacteria make B vitamins for us. So another reason why we're, many of us are B vitamin deficient is because we don't have good microbiomes that make a lot of the B vitamins. So we have to eat all of them, which can be, it's not really how we were made to be. Okay, so um, cod liver oil, fermented cod liver oil from green pastures or cod liver oil from Rosita's are the two brands I recommend that are available in the US that do not have synthetic vitamins added and are properly made as foods. So Rosita's are green pastures. Um, I prefer green pastures um, because it has a concentrated butter oil, which is very helpful to absorb the other nutrition. Um, and kind of makes your cod liver oil about four times stronger. So you take the same dose of cod liver oil mixed with butter oil as you would just the cod liver oil plain, and you get about four times the effect, which is awesome. Um, cod liver oil helps with hair health, teeth health. Um, in curing tooth decay, one of the main pieces of that is doing fermented cod liver oil from green pastures, specifically that is what helps in the testimonials of parents who have remineralized their um, kids' teeth um, or are, have prevented cavities from progressing or you know, stopped a, an awful falling apart mouth and made healthy teeth, healthy mouth over a couple of years. So that is a really, really great thing. Um, very important to be taking every day for every person. If your child does not like it, especially if they're little, you can rub it on their skin and have it to absorb. Um, I rarely see any kind of dairy reaction with the concentrated butter oil because it's pretty much like ghee. Uh, so it's very mild, um, very low react reaction um, frequency. And if you can't tolerate the fermentation or your body for whatever reason does not like green pastures because that happens, um, it is okay. You can do the Rosita's. And you can also buy the concentrated butter oil separately. So you could add them together on your own. So that would be my recommendation if you can't do the fermented cod liver oil. 90% of people tolerate fermented cod liver oil just fine. And it also has B vitamins in it because it's fermented. So exciting. Um, liver is an important dense food and any other organ meats, heart, spleen, kidneys. If you butcher your own animals or have a butcher, um, these are great things to get from them. But liver is the most readily available and also a very dense food. It has a lot of B vitamins, a lot of minerals, and a lot of vitamin A. A lot of vitamin A. So when we have those, we uh, eating liver. How do you eat liver? I've got blog posts about hiding liver in different recipes like meatballs. Um, you can also do desiccated liver, which is raw dehydrated liver in a powder that you can put in capsules. Um, or sprinkle on top of food. 
Um, whatever works and however you get that liver in you is great. Um, raw liver has, let me say this way, cooked liver loses about two thirds of the nutritional value. Raw liver is much more dense. So if you're able to find a way to do it, you can freeze, deep freeze a good grass fed raw liver um, for two weeks. And then that has killed any of the really dangerous pathogens and allows you to safely eat raw liver um, in different recipes and forms as well, including just cut up into small pieces and swallow it. Um, raw liver is actually not bad because it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not as strong and I mean, you're not chewing it. Anyway, I don't really mind swallowing raw liver uh, shots is what we call them. And I believe I have a video about that somewhere. I think so. Anyway, um, foods, other foods, nutrient dense foods are meats, animal fats, cod liver oil, um, caviar actually is a very dense food that many, many cultures incorporate. Um, other organ meats were always reserved for the chiefs, the babies, and the pregnant moms or the childbearing age women. Um, and then we have, um, did I talk about animal fat? Yes. And then fermented vegetables is also a very dense food. Sauerkraut cabbage fermented has about 20 times or more the vitamin C of cabbage. So that's why people on German sailors never got scurvy because they always brought cabbage sauerkraut on board. So um, pretty helpful food. You need a lot of vitamin C. All right. So to grow healthy bones, we need calcium. Calcium is from fermented dairy products, raw dairy products, um, dark green leafy vegetables, and if you struggle with those different things for whatever reason, allergies, etc., you can do calcium lactate. Santa Process has, just as an aside. We need structure, so we need fat soluble vitamins to make good um, eyes and um, connective tissue in the joints. Um, connective tissue, um, just wherever our body has connective tissue, so double jointed. Um, knock knees, um, fatigue, just worn out looking body and skin. Those are all um, fat soluble vitamin deficiencies. So we need more fat, probably more protein. You need to make sure that your child's able to digest protein and microbiome is a huge part of that. So in essence, in sum up, since we're already at 47 minutes, I knew this one would be longer today. Um, in sum up, Number one, we can avoid, and we don't have to be afraid of our world. Your body can handle EMFs. Your body can handle toxins and chemicals and pesticides and even glyphosate much, much better if it is well-fed and nourished. Everything is working. Your liver and other detox organs have everything that they need to function. This is a good place to be. Also, when we eat fat, our bile flows quickly, which means the toxins that the liver puts into the bile to get rid of, get, get gotten rid of. Um, so that's going to be really helpful. Then we want to make sure we're feeding and nourishing our bodies. And this is going to be nutrient dense foods, mostly animal foods, as well as fermented vegetables and animal fat. Um, this is what healthy children are raised on. Um, and the enzymes, um, the growth the, the speed of growth for children's bodies requires animal foods um, and lots of them and they love them. Um, also, when we start putting carbohydrates in, often your kid will not eat those foods because, because of various reasons. Um, so if your child is not eating the good dense foods like meat stock, meat, animal fat, bacon, butter on her broccoli, all that kind of thing, the thing that I would recommend is cut out any kind of not just processed food, which is already out, right? Because we're avoiding chemicals, but cut out any kind of um, simple carbohydrate, grain, pasta, um, even nuts and seeds have quite a bit of carbohydrates in them. <clears throat> so it's better to cut those out um, even just for a week or so. And oftentimes the taste buds start um, balancing out, the child will start liking those foods, and then you can add some more simple carbohydrates back in. Um, even fruit can be a, a troublemaker. So fruits, breads, pastas, grains, sugars, of course, um, are out, and then good nourishing animal foods and fermented foods in, um, and then you can start adding those other foods back in 
But now you'll notice when they start getting picky again or start getting moody again um, or have other symptoms. So, all right. And then the microbiome is the center of all of it. The microbiome um, eats our food that we eat. So we do have to make sure we're getting, we're feeding what we want to feed because carbohydrates will feed candida and that will overgrow. Um, meats and, and plants and fiber are going to feed our good microbiome and they will get stronger. Um, we can help support our microbiome with a commercial probiotic or just with fermented foods, depending on how good of uh, good the gut is already um, and the, how, how populated and diversified the gut flora is already. Um, and then we always want to support it, just like humans have always done until re refrigeration very recently, right? So new things in our world are refrigeration, chemicals, and no nutrition in the food we actually eat. So it's actually amazing how well our bodies do. And we just have to on purpose counteract those three things. We avoid chemicals as much as possible. We on purpose eat microbiome supporting bacteria, um, foods, right? And we eat dense foods um, as much as possible from the best sources possible um, that our budget and our sourcing can afford. And we just stop listening to marketing. <laughs> feed your kids food. Um, feed them what you eat or what you should be eating, um, what we talked about. And um, take out what chemicals you can. And that is that. So hopefully that is helpful and encouraging. Um, again, those three main categories of things that have changed in our world. And we've always done on purpose. We've always, as human cultures, eaten sacred foods to have healthy babies. And we've lost that teaching. Um, we've lost that information. It's not, it, it got missed getting passed on and listened to and encouraged um, in the last hundred years or so through our cultures. Um, so we have to fight for it to come back. We need to do the things that are simple and easy to do. Um, for, so fermented foods, no toxins, dense foods. That's it. <laughs> I know that's a lot of work and you guys are doing awesome. Keep on what you're doing. You are raising and caring about raising beautiful, healthy children. And I'm excited to help you do it more. Do it and better get more information to be able to um, be efficient and, and uh, correct in the things that you do on purpose for your family. So hopefully that's helpful. Go ahead and throw some comments or questions anytime um, into the comments. I will see those notifications pop up on my channel and get to those answers as I can. If you want to support our educational endeavors, we do have a donut bu donate button on our website, bewellclinic.net slash events or maybe donate. There'll be a link in the description also for that. Um, and any, any, it all takes you to the same page if you donate under any event. So that is all. Um, we do have uh, three classes in July, so make sure to get on our newsletter. Uh, you can go to bewellclinic.net um, to sign up for our newsletter. And I'm wondering where the button is. Hopefully there's a button. If not, you can um, fill out the contact form and we'll throw you on it. I will double check on that. <laughs> but uh, if you're watching this later, it should be there by the time you watch this. Um, so we have that. Um, love to, we always are doing classes here, both on YouTube and you can also subscribe to our channel. Um, hit the like button for this video is awesome and helpful if you liked it. Also hitting um, the the uh, subscribe button and notification button that will actually notify you when we um, go live and when we post any videos because we also post normal videos. Uh, we just did a video about juicing and making GAPS milkshakes, which are great dense foods and help with detoxification. So you can go ahead and check those out also, but we're doing new content all the time. Um, that's all my housekeeping stuff. So thank you for coming. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing this video, for liking. Um, that just helps get the word out for sure. And I hope that you all have a good night or day or whenever you watch this. And we will talk to you later. Bye, everybody.